We intend to plow up a paddock. Step one is getting the tractor ready. Every 1,000 hours, given an oil change. I will show you how to check the air filter in these. They've got a very cool air filter, which you would not expect, you know, if you're not used to old tractors, what they have. Now, you're supposed to check the air filter every 10 to 20 hours operation. And I've actually had it where I've had this here closed. And the starlings have actually crawled up in here and actually died in the in the air filter and blocked the air filter. So you should check it. And this is actually an oil-based air filter. Do it like that. This is the air filter here. And here you can see there's a lot of oil on it. And I'll show you why for good reason. Do this. And sometimes it's really dusty, these things will actually, oil level will actually go above the line. Or, and I've actually found dead starlings and all sorts in this. So the air comes down through here, and all the dust st sticks to the oil, and that there's... Oh, look at all the gunk that that thing picked up, look at that. Yeah. That was nowhere near as sludgy. So what we'll do is we'll change the oil out of, out of this and then put the waste oil back in from out of the sump here. Look at the particles and stuff. I didn't think it would be that bad. My old man had a, well he's still got it, Massey Ferguson. And it wouldn't start and so he changed the air filter. It had been that long, it had been that dusty that it had um, actually filled up with dust and he thought it was just oil but there was only a thin layer of oil on it and all the rest was just solid. It says oil level so that there's the oil level there that we'll fill it up to. But what we'll do is we'll drain the oil out of the um out of the crankcase there and then we'll uh, then we'll top it up with waste we'll put the good oil, good oil back on that side and we'll put the waste oil on here. And then after it goes past the oil goes past that to, and then through so all the air that goes through the engine has to pass through all these so so no solid bits can get stuck in it and last time I did it this was like completely blocked to get it that clean I actually um, used that bucket and about an inch of petrol and just gave it a good wash and then let air out for a day anyone who's a fridging will recognize this I have a big chunk of ducting, I turn into my big drip tray, don't spill anything on the floor. And if you've been observant in my shed, you'll notice that there's a few places where I have actually spilt big blodges of oil on my concrete. I always keep a, a spill kit on hand, and that's just all my um, firewood sawdust from chopping up the, chopping up the uh, firewood this year. You put on the oil, soaks it up. Hopefully, quicker than the concrete can. Dun, 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 dun. Doesn't that just look pretty? It does. <laughs> For some reason. Oops, there's something important in there. Now the actual instructions in the book says to uh, remove the heater element, oil heater element, and throw it away after 120 hours of use, and or replace it. There's obviously no heater filler element in here. The things you, fit, you think about doing on a rainy day in the middle of a quarantine, then you realise you don't have a spare filter. <laughs> As you can tell, I drained the oil, and I had a little accident. Oops. So I used up most of my, um, Sawdust. This here was completely clogged. You see, it looks a little bit cleaner now. I soaked it in petrol for a couple of days, and then just stuck some petrol in a um, in a jar and gave it a good swish about. 
and it um, yeah got quite a lot of uh, muck out. Definitely changed that, but because we're in quarantine, I can't get my hands on one, so I forgot to clean it out and let it dry up and reuse it. So I'm just going to give us a coating of fresh oil, and then I'm going to put it all back together, and then I'll uh, top it up. I was told to use this is the stuff to use for old timey tractors. This is the old timey type sort of oil that can also be used as hydraulic oil. Apparently, because I was going to stick some synthetic oil on this because I figured, well, you know, Magnatech, it's you know, even if it runs dry, it's supposed to be the best of the best of the best. But <laughs> I went to a tractor place that specializes in, in working with tractors and old tractors, and they said basically you stick new oil in old tractors and they have. They go epileptic, they just don't like it, so, and you'll do more damage than good regardless of how, what the reps claim that the oil will do. I always would have called this a filter, because what it said to do in the manual, because I actually do have the manual, was remove the filter, throw away the um, element, and wash the filter out. But what they actually mean is they, this is what they call in the old book from the 60s. This is an element, I would call this <laughs> the filter part of the filter, and they mean this is the filter. Yeah. Which I wouldn't have thought because, I'm please on that one. tell me if I'm wrong. I would have thought this was, but this is called a filter element. I would call this a filter cartridge, is what I would have called it, because <laughs> I uh, do like water cartridges for ice machines and things like that. And they look very similar to this, and this arrangement where you stick it in, forces, and you know, they say change the filter, throw yeah, away the cartridge. That's the thing that filters it. I would have never have called this in my wildest dreams an element. Maybe they've stopped doing it in the last 50 years because this was made in 1968 or something. So maybe they're calling it something different these days, but in the old timey book, they call it an element. And this track should take a gallon and a half of of oil. My god, that's thick like treacle. That's not like modern engine oil, is it? Although it's doing better than the oil I took out of it. It came out like chain bar oil for, for a, for a um, chainsaw, which is something I actually do is I actually give all my vehicles regular oil changes and I use the waste oil as chain bar oil for my chainsaws. That works fine. So I was going to say, no, oh, you can only use new oil. It's like, well, you can recycle it. And I've had my chainsaw, was it 12 years now? And I go through, was it, oh, three or four liters of chain bar oil a And that's year. a second hand chainsaw, isn't it? That's a second hand chainsaw yeah. and I've had it for 12 years and it's never blown up. So I've never, never thrown a chain. All right, here goes the, um, was it rubber o-ring? I'm just going to put a little bit of grease on that, which I, on my overzealous greasing of, um, of the track. And the reason I'm putting that bit of grease on is so it doesn't fall out of the slot. A little blob of grease will just help it stay there. So it's just sitting on the inside of that. Yep, is yep, so that feel, so that this should seal on that nice clean face there. So then what we do is we put that in. That is our bolt. And this here goes in like that. Boom. I'm actually going to dip this in oil. We want to hold it a bit closer so that we're not dribbling it on the ground. <laughs> not that you haven't already made a mess, but you know. Yeah, trust me, it's not the messes. <laughs> the messes so. Here's my funnel, which I made myself. No. I did, I made myself, can you tell? <laughs> one and a half litres. Really? Yep, it's one and a half litres. So it should take about, was it a gallon and a half? That should be closer to six litres then.
Yeah, it's three and a half litres. We just gotta give it a minute for it to drain through the crank, through the, uh, from the head all the way down to the bottom. Give it a few minutes to rest. There we go, boom. Yeah. There we go, right. Now this is the air filter bit. Now this is some of uh, the waste oil I've saved. And this is where we put the oil level up to, in fact it even says exact oil level to there. It's so I'm gonna, <laughs> and this is for the air filter. So I don't use good oil on this, I use, I think even the book it says use the waste oil from on the machine, but that's more like, what is it? Gold, no, it's more, it's more like molasses than, than oil at the moment in this weather, so. Good call, love, good call. See? Right. Right. So that's yep. the air filter there. So you just fit it up there like that. That engine goes over there like that. And then this clamp. That's what's it around the other way. I prefer it that way. Just like that. And just do that up like so. Is that part done? And just check the oil level again. <coughs> and here. Oh yeah, there you go. Oh yeah. Nice. Oh yeah. That. Perfect. So I might just stick just a few hundred mils more in. And what we're gonna have to do is we're just gonna have to run it up for five, ten minutes. And then we're gonna switch it off. And then we're going to check the oil level again because you've got to fill that full of oil as well and just check it for leaks. I'll literally just let it run for eight minutes or so and you're just gonna check the oil level. So you see it's used up a bit of oil to fill that up. So we'll top that back up to max and then we should be ready to attach the implements and we might be able to start powering up our paddock so we can plant the wheat. <laughs> 